Good evening, everyone, and welcome here for Kansas for round eight of the 2022 championship season. It's been a wild weekend, to say the least. Practice, we saw some of the most unexpected teams and drivers lead the practice sheet. But when it came down to qualifying, the Rodriguez Racing Camrys continued to be super good. Dylan Schwellenberg won at Charlotte, then was super good at Richmond. Just came up one spot short to Jake Bassinger. Bassinger won for the second time this season, being the first driver to score two or more victories this season and extending the championship lead to now 20 points over to John Weeks. The field still very close in the championship standings, but now only five drivers, Bassinger, Weeks, Curtis, Schwalemerg, and Johnson, all stand within a chance of taking the championship lead after today, but it is not as close as what it was. Bassinger will have to come from outside the top 10 today. He didn't qualify all the best exactly. He's actually down there in 31st. So he's going to come from a long ways back. So our championship leader has some ground to make up. Same with Dylan Schwellenberg, who was runner up to him last week. He starts 34th this afternoon. Jesse Turner, the defending champion, has not got off to a good start this season. He starts 35th today. He's hoping to turn that around starting today. So we have some strong contenders starting out back for this afternoon. Let's get down to start the race. Getting ready to take the green for this afternoon. Matthew Rodriguez leading the field. Rodriguez won here last year in his number nine Camry. And alongside of him is the driver that got injured in this race last season. So two different sides of the story from last year. Rodriguez looking to repeat. Silver Fox doesn't want a repeat of last season. He wants to be in Rodriguez's shoes from last season and taking the checkered flag. Shelly and Davidson behind looking for their first win of the season. To Max and Hart back there in row three looking for their first top ten of the season. The field is racing at Kansas. Off turn two, Matthew Rodriguez slides up in front of Silver Fox, who didn't get that good of a start. Here it comes James Shelley shooting the inside. Eric DeMax in car zero. The inside line right where you want to be. Charles Sanford digging on the inside as well. The inside line super good in the first lap. The entire field all on top of each other. Shelley and Rodriguez side by side for the lead. Ryan Griffin in car three for CM Racing. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. Griffin will not be back full time for, in the Sony Cup Series for the 2023 season. That was news coming in this race weekend as well. Some more drivers have been signed for the upcoming 2023 season. It's still very early in the 2022 campaign, but Cybertron Motorsports has signed DJ Curtis, their two time champion, back on the grid to return with them as well as Zayden Davidson. Davidson has two finishes inside the podium and is a top 10 driver in the championship standings coming into this into this race and a realistic title contender for this, this season. So Cybertron Motorsports backing both Curtis and Davidson for the title and for race wins. You know, Cole Baker, he's in the field he qualified in, but Baker in the 99, gonna be looking for word on his career in the coming months. Word is that Flipside Motorsports could be an option for him in a second Flipside car. That is the sister team to Cybertron Motorsports after all. As we come to lap five, Eric Tomax, who has not finished inside the top 10 in any of the races so far this season, CM Racing. It is very unusual for CM Racing to go this long and just be off the pace. You know, they have not been a race winning team all season so far and they've struggled and the top leading Chevrolet team has been Curtis Racing and mainly Cody Lamas. Lamas continues to stay inside the top 10 in the driver standings in ninth position and he is the flagship Chevy car at this point in the year. Rodriguez and Shelley continue to lead the way. It is DeMax in third who is off to a good start in this race. Allison Rain currently dead last. Did a good job to get this car in the field. She's been doing a good job the last two events to get that 29 Fitzwater racing car in the field. The future for her is at Fisher Motorsports. That 29 car, Allison Rain. You know, Rain will be moving over from Fitzwater Racing Team to be driving for Zachary Fitzwater, his own, actually, 
moving from Zachary Fitzwater's team to replace Zachary Fitzwater in the Fisher Motorsports stable. Replacing Rain in that car for next season will be renumbered re to the 59 for Lars Van Shake. It'll be Van Shake's first full-time campaign in the Sony Cup Series. So news all around in silly season, but here comes James Shelley down the inside. James Shelley's been so good. Every time he is running at the end of the race, he is just doing an amazing job out there this season. And, well, he's really low in the point standings, but he's got a long ways to go in this year. He could recover and make a good stance for him in that third performance team. They're three wide for third position. Demax has lost that third position. Davidson with a new contract to boot, running very solid. Side by side with Charles Sanford in his Red Bull. Battle for fifth, outside pole sitter, James Sorafox fighting back. Team Velocity has been in the news as well. A few weeks ago, Team Velocity announced that Team Velocity and Martin Motorsports will be racing in a partnership with the new engine manufacturer of Mitsubishi. And that will be one of the new manufacturers that will enter the team and enter the series for the 2023 season. You know, it's Chevrolet, Ford, Dodge, Toyota, Honda, Mercedes, and now Mitsubishi is announced as well with Honda be, to be joining the grid in 2023. How about Brandon Beal? Brandon Beal in car 33, just outside of the top 10 right now. Beal in the 33 has some FBRL experience, very minimum experience. That has been noted in the paddock that the 33 driver of Beal failed to qualify for multiple races for Young Motorsports, got let go from that team, and hired on at Hero Motorsports to be a fill-in driver for whenever they can't get a driver to race for that car. Did very well in the latter stages of last season. Got hired on for North Border Motorsports to do the job when they can't get a Hardy's National Series full-time driver to fill in in the 33 or the 13. And Beal inside the top 15, actually in the top 10 right now, side by side with Jacob Hart. He's racing with two-time champions of Jacob Hart and DJ Curtis. Curtis is fighting his way forward. He's got a fast race car. I'm not sure if we've mentioned it in the broadcast at Richmond, but Jeff James, he's got a new contract as well for the 2023 season. In car 18 for Joseph Strigley Racing. He's currently in 17th position racing with Richard Johnson. And we know Jeff James will be back in that 18 car for next season. Rumor has it that coming into this race weekend, Chris Dodd and John Art have been very unhappy with the management over there at Allen Family Racing Team. And they could be looking at other op options for the 2023 season. It is, in, it is only May, but with... The way Silly Season has started off with a few drivers extending their contracts, it's got some people talking in the garage area. Who is going to go where? It's still a very long season. 2022 has not even made it to a third of the way through the schedule just yet. Actually, yeah, just barely a third of the way through the season. And, well, everyone is starting to wonder where are they going to end up. Jake Bassinger knows where he's going to end up. He's going to end up being in a part-time role. With Turn Performance Racing, looks like he's going to have a little role here and there running part-time in the FBRL, but he is not going to be racing full-time. But for him, he's not even worried about next season. He's worried about today and this entire 2022 championship season. Bassinger wants to join the greats as a two-time champion of the Sony Cup Series. He's starting off the year right. He is 20 points to the good on day John Weeks, but, well, he and the whole Turn Performance Racing team qualified super poorly and all I have to wonder is if that turn performance team just has a very good race setup for their race cars because not a single one of them qualified in the top 30 but Turner is the highest one out there actually James Shelley in the 71 he did qualify in the top 30 but not Bassinger Turner or Dylan Young and so, well, they got a long ways to go if they want to get there to James Shelley. Such a heartbreak from this guy right here, Charlie Smith. You know, he took the lead from Dylan Schwellenberg in the early going at Richmond, and pitch strategy just was not kind to him at Richmond. And Smith, that first career win, just slipped out of his grasp just right there. Jake Bassinger undercutting and was able to get that position on him. 
and he was never able to recover and then had that engine failure. It wasn't really an engine failure. So a battery died on that 76 car, had to get a new battery in that 76 car on pit road after he got towed. And well, it wasn't the day he would have hoped for. Anthony Marchese, it hasn't been the run of races he would have hoped for. He was a big contender to win the Daytona 500, but ever since then, it has not been the season the 54 driver would have liked. And he's hoping that his season turns around here soon. We're talking very highly of Dylan Schrollenberg's last two races with Rodriguez Racing, and he has not been able to march his way to the front as soon as he would have liked. He is still deep in the pack. He's in 37th position, racing with Matt DeLeo, Mitchell Collins, and Tim Foster. And this 10 car is just stuck in the pack. There's just nowhere for Dylan Schrollenberg to go in his Toyota Camry. And while Matthew Rodriguez continues to lead the way, Dylan Schwillenberg is having an ill-handling time. He cannot get out of this pack. 25 laps down, 75 laps to go. Matthew Rodriguez continues to lead the way over James Shelley, Zayden Davidson, the top three. Then it's Charles Sanford, and then the CM Racing boys. It's good to see CM Racing actually running very well this afternoon. Eric Demax in fifth, and Mr. Kansas himself, Ryan Griffin. He loves Kansas. Eric Demax tends to run really well on the 1.5 mile tracks too. Cody Lamas just behind them. The Chevys are all tucked together. Then there's two Mercedes of James Zora Fox and DJ Curtis with Dajon Weeks now entering the top 10 in his MER Dodge. A good ways ahead of his championship contender, uh, Jake Bassinger. Jake apart just outside of the top 10 right now. Brandon Beal is continuing to impress in the North Border Motorsports Toyota. He's in 12th. Samuel England, Richard Johnson, and Sean Harple. That makes up the top 15. Ryan Acosta running well for Mace Enterprises. Harple really getting a good run on England there, powering back around both Johnson and England. Jeff James still in 17th. Tom Caps, his teammate Vince Fries right behind him. They're in 18th and 19th. Martin Motorsports have big plans for next season, just like Team Velocity. Anthony Marchese entering the top 20. Then there's John R. He desperately needs a good run this afternoon. There he is in 21st. Charlie Smith, last week's underdog story. What could have been there for him? Jesse Tunner continuing to march his way to the front. 23rd now. Oh, Jeffrey White, Stephen Paul the third, racing really hard against each other. Oh, and now we have pit stops. Very early pit stops. It was nothing like Charlotte. They are pitting super early. And we're getting told that Goodyear brought a very soft tire, something that has been unusual to a lot of these races this season. These guys have been able to run a lot longer on these tires in the last few races, but this is much like the 2020 and the last year's tires. You can't run very long on them. Here goes Griffin. There's Davidson getting out just ahead of the zero. And James Shelley getting a good run on the exit there. He's taking a longer route. He's going to get a big run on Matt Rodriguez. Rodriguez had a bigger lead on James Shelley, but Shelley's going to be right on the back bumper. Because of that, James Shelley's going to take advantage of it. And the 71 team got a good drive off pit road. Maybe Matt Rodriguez, he, it looked like his crew got him off good, very well, very good as well, but Shelley took a longer route around off pit road and was able to get the momentum and take the race lead. Peter Onjak has continued to stay out and lead a couple laps, but it is James Shelley taking the lead. As pit stops start to cycle out just a little bit, Rodriguez still wanting to get the lead back right underneath of James Shelley just a little bit. Zayden Davidson's there too. See him racing zero and three are right there in the top five still. Brandon Beal, that 33 team running very good today in sixth position. Samuel England in seventh. DJ Curtis eighth. Charles Sanford slipped back tonight. James Sorafox is in 10th. Jeff James' crew really did a good job of pit road. Get him up there in 11th. Chris Dodd in the 44. We're hearing that he's had troubles and he's a lap down. And then Dajon Weeks is in 12th. And then 13th is Cody Lamas. Hart trying to find it, but can't do nothing about it. Richard Johnson's still in 15th. Martin Motorsports boys running side by side for 16th. Acosta, Art. Top 20, Nick Mays looking for his best finish of the season. Same with Art, they're in the top 20. And this third three wide with Turner, Marchese, and Charlie Smith. Alex Vignaco, Logan Cloud, Stephen Paul III, Daniel Bouchard, Allison Ray. 
A lot of good names up here in this top 30. Having a stellar run. Rain in particular. Kyle Collins and Will Goss in the 51 down here in 30th. Blake Warren made his debut. Actually, that's Bobby Jones. Blake Warren made his debut in the Richmond race last week. But it's Bobby Jones not having the best of runs, I would have expected from Jones. But he's been struggling, and a lot of the Mercedes cars have been struggling with their handling, Will Goss especially. And then three wide with Jake Bassinger, the championship leader, not having the best of days in his Bane car. He's to the inside of Matt DeLeo. Harpel had a bad pit stop too. Jeffrey White's back here. Cole Baker's back here. Another one that's had a lot of handling issues with their race cars. Dylan Young and Dylan Schwallenberg have all struggled with the handling today. Schwallenberg's not been able to make any progress and this is not the run this is not the kind of effort we would usually see out of this uh, Rodriguez racing car. And Dylan Schwellenberg has got to be just questioning what went wrong with the setup today. While Schwellenberg struggles down there near 40th, his teammate and boss, Matt Rodriguez, is just duking it out with James Shelley. It's been nothing but James Shelley and Matt Rodriguez today. Nobody's been able to challenge them, but they've been side by side for about eight laps now. Davidson continues to be right there, but it's going to take a lot of adjustments from the field to try and challenge Shelly and Rodriguez today. We're being told that Chris Dodd is down on power in the 44 Dodge. That is the reason why Dodd had to come down pit road to make an extra stop. And Dodd is more than a second off the pace in the 44 car. And that's a shame for Chris Dodd. He's been running very well for a car that is quite frankly not been there in terms of pace all season he has come in here 21st in the point standings and has quite frankly looked like the leader of that organization of this season and Dodge usually never been the kind that, to lead a race team but I know it's just got to be very frustrating this is a team that three seasons ago had a realistic chance to win the owners and drivers championship Brandon Beal continues to run so well. He has been able to fend off against the two-time champion of DJ Curtis. And here comes the Red Bulls, Charles Sanford and Samuel England. Beal trying to hold him off. But the charge in Bulls is going to make their way by. Samuel England has not had a top 10 finish at all this season. And England desperately wants that side by side against Brandon Beal. And it's funny enough because Brandon Beal and North Border Motorsports, they get a lot of their equipment from Rodriguez Racing, a lot of help from that team. And while Dylan Schwellenberg and Anthony Marchese aren't having the best of days, Matt Rodriguez definitely hit on something with his race team. And same thing goes for the 33 team. This has been one of the better runs that I've seen of any team velocity car all season. Jacob Hart in the 61, he's a two-time champion of the series. A lot of people pipped him to be the team leader of Team Velocity, and so far he has. But Team Velocity has not hit the ground running this season. They're outside the top 30 in owner points. And, well, Jacob Hart, a lot of people, myself included, would have expected more out of, out of him. However, he has been out of the series for a while, joined back in the Hardy's National Series full time from last season. Didn't have the best of runs with Flying Aces Racing but his level of experience is very important. And he's a two-time champion, same with Richard Johnson. He just never can take away that experience of what it means to be a champion of this league. And Hart running very well right now, knocking on the door of a top 10 run. Very quietly, James Sorfox has moved his way into the top five past the CM Racing Cars and is only two seconds down the road from the race leaders and Zayden Davidson's crew has adjusted on his car last pit stop just enough to get him just where he's right there within a sniff of taking the lead from Rodriguez and James Shelley. But it's gonna take another massive adjustment in this next round of pit stops for anybody to get as closely as competitive as Rodriguez and James Shelley this afternoon. But don't look now, James Sorafox is flying. Jesse Turner just passed Vince Freeze and he's gonna be working on dime caps here soon. And Turner is now in the top 20. Joseph Shrigley enters today's race in the top 10 in the driver standings. He is eight in points, but 
much like some of his other contenders in for the championship in this race, Shrigley not having the best of runs. We're halfway in the race, still have a long ways to go. He's gaining points on Jake Bassinger, but he's not gaining a whole lot of points. And when, when Bassinger is running like he is today, you need to be inside the top 10. And Shrigley's been running inside the top 10 on more than one occasion this entire season. And He's working on Nick Mays to work his way up into 22nd position. Stephen Paul III working on Logan Cloud. That's a battle for 24th. Jake Bassinger, though. Just like um, a few of the other guys back here, like Dylan Young, his teammate, and Dylan Schwellenberg. Just a very mysterious run right now for some of our title contenders. Just some of the poorest runs that we would not usually see from these guys. And you have to mention the Hardy's National Series champion, Alex Pignaco. He's down here, Jeffrey White as well in the 11. Uh, these are drivers that we know have great ability in the FBRL. Look at their Hardy's National Series runs and some of their runs in the cup level have been extraordinary. And Pignaco racing with Will Goss and Allison Rain. You know, teams that, those teams right there don't have quite the funding as CM Racing. And Benyako, he must have been one of those that missed the setup today while his teammates are running up there fighting for the top five. James Silverfox has reeled in the top three, and this is a wake-up call. Davidson to the outside of James Shelley. Matt Riga is going to have to fend off three cars. Davidson round the outside, gets two race cars. Wow, competition for the 9-71. The 91 and the 34 have entered the chat. <laughs> they are there. And Silver Fox has got the best car right now. He has been about a tenth or two faster than the leaders every lap. Davidson has kicked it up another gear. He's side by side with Silver Fox, but we should be coming up on pit stops again here shortly. Round the outside, nothing Matthew Rodriguez can really do to hold James Silver Fox off. Silver Fox, who qualified on the outside pole, takes the pole center by surprise. And Silver Fox is out front leading the race in his Patronus Mercedes. Four cars under a blanket. Rodriguez and Shelly have been uncontested for the lead all day. But the Mercedes of Silver Fox and Davidson have came out of nowhere here. And they are fierce contenders now as we close in on 40 to go. Cody Lamas has entered the top five. DJ Curtis, who finished third in the points last season. The 19 car around the outside of Griffin takes that position away. Sanford and eight. Dejon Weeks is now in the top 10. Eric DeMag slipping back now. He's down to 10. England could get by him. Here comes Griffin coming to pit road in car three. Matthew Rodriguez and Zayden Davidson have came down pit road. They're short pitting against James Sorfox and James Shelley. So this is going to be a little interesting. Cody Lamas and Curtis stayed out too. Sorfox stays out again. You know, Shelley has came down pit road. He's in the pits. But Sorfox, this is two laps after Matthew Rodriguez and Zayden Davidson just hit pit road. So Sorfox, who was on the charge in car 34, is doing the overcut strategy. And maybe this will work out for him. He's coming to pit road now. Zayden Davidson and his crew got him off pit road first ahead of Matthew Riguez. And there's James Sorfox on the apron. You know, those couple of laps staying out on older tires. Tire wear is key, but Sorfox is gonna have the freshest tires of anyone in this run. Sorfox left pit road, then it was Sanford and Dejon Weeks. Brandon Beal and team continuing to undercut in the 33 organization. The CM Racing cars chose to do the undercut strategy as well. Bassinger's on pit road, Turner's on pit road. Pit stop still cycling out right now, but it should be Davidson that'll leave with the race lead in this run. 35 laps to go and absolutely brutal. Dylan Schwellenberg's a lap down, but he's fighting back. An adjustment on the car 10 for the second pit stop of the day, coming a little too late. Schwellenberg finding his way back on the lead lap. To the right of Schwellenberg, it is his teammate Matthew Riguez taking the lead back from Davidson. The running order has been jumbled up. It is Rodriguez, Davidson, first, second, then she and James Shelley left with a mountain decline. 
to try and reel that gap back in. Same with James Silverfox. Shelley ahead of Samuel England, who's in fourth. Then it's Silverfox, who has a win right there within his grasp. It has been since 2017. James Silverfox has won a race in the Sony Cup Series. Today, he's got a phenomenal car. He's got a, a lot of ground to make up, but he's got the freshest tires. He's going to be quicker. He's going to be working on Samuel England to get by for fourth. Ryan Griffin, it's good to see CM Racing really adapting and getting better, making adjustments, bringing up breeds whenever they can. CM Racing, they're a championship team. Won the title with Luke Martin in 2020. 2021, they kind of took a step back, and it seems like they have not made any gains, but Griffin... Up here in six, they have to take this as a positive because lately they've been a 20th place car or worse. And to see both two cars in the top 10 right now, it's good for them. And Marchese is on the apron. And I don't think a caution is going to come out for that because he's off, he was off the racetrack. But for Anthony Marchese, it's a shame for him. He could be out of the race. And it wasn't an engine failure at all, but he almost took out Stephen Pollard the third. But a similar issue to Charlie Smith last week. The car just died on him out of nowhere. The car quit running, and Anthony Marchese had to get a tow back to the pits. With 25 laps to go, the 1.5 mile king, Matha Riguez is so good at the 1.5 mile tracks. Can he hang on and win today? Here's the margin. It is Rodriguez, Davidson, then it's James Shelley and James Sorfox. Sorfox is gonna be super tough to beat, but you gotta think, James Shelley. Shelley also did the undercut. He came in a little early, but he's got one lap fresher tires than Rodriguez and Davidson, but also one lap older tires than Sorfox. <coughs> one lap better, one lap older. And Shelley, right now, if he can just hold off James Sorfox, and steadily reel in the top two. He also could be a threat to do it, but Silver Fox looks very good. He's gonna go to the inside. The inside, though, as the run progresses, has been tough to make a pass, because the top side's been very good when you get, get it rubbered up. So we know it's Rodriguez, Davidson, Silver Fox, and Shelly that look the best at this point in the race. Curtis is slowly coming to life in car 19. It's a good points day for the two-time champion. Enters this race third in points, 37 back. He's going to make up a good bit of points. Six at the moment, looking for fifth. Griffin Lamas, Weeks in car 30 in the top 10. Bassinger still struggling today. And then Sanford in 10th, outside the top 10. We still do not see Jake Bassinger needing to make up ground as we come to 22 laps to go. It is to Max and a bunch of cars. Look at Fence Freeze. Vince Reese has been in the back there about 18th all day. He's looking for 12th. Oh boy, Richard Johnson, who's also been very consistent in the points. James hit the wall. Nick Mays is in the top 15. This is a water race car. Look at them from Vince Freeze back to Ryan Acosta. 12th all the way down to 20th, all in a gaggle together. We're going to have one more pit stop, I believe. And all these drivers trying to get as much out of the race cars as possible. Jesse Tyner, last year's champion, trying to get back up there to the top 10. Johnson around the outside of Nick Mace. Oh, he's around the outside of Vince Freeze. Three wide for 12th with 20 laps to go. The top 20 having a great scrap. Marchese, his car did die on him. He had a battery change, and he's back out on the track. Jacob Parton and Alex Bianco racing for 21st. Charlie Smith, Sean Harpel, Jeffrey White, and then Jay Bassinger. Bassinger all the way down outside the top 25. Then with Pollard third, Bouchard, Cloud, Goss, Baker, and Rain. It's just not been the race that the championship leader would have wanted. You can't have races like this. If you're going to win the championship, you have to be very consistent. And, well, two wins on the board, and he's been very consistent up to now. And, well, this is going to open the door for 
his rivals in the championship race to gain a lot of points. Silver Fox has looked much better than James Shelley to be able to run down the front two, but Shelley has been pinching Silver Fox down. James Silver Fox has the better car, but Shelley has the second best car, and he's able to hold off Silver Fox just enough. Both cars, third and fourth right now, are quicker than the two cars in front of them. Oops, uh, Rodriguez and Davidson. James Shelley driving like he's never drove before. I mean, he is doing very well. Holding off Silver Fox at this point in the race. If Silver Fox gets by James Shelley, the race is probably over for the win, at least, for James Shelley. And he is closed right up to the back end of second place, Zayden Davidson. Could get a change for second position. Here comes James Shelley down the inside of Zayden Davidson. Davidson needs to try and put up a fight here, but he can't. Them older tires just by a lap. Shelley has been able to hold off Silver Fox. Oh, and here comes Shelley now. He's going to come down pit road for his final pit stop. He caught the race leader and is going to pit with an undercut. This is going to be big. I think James Shelley and team just masterminded this entire race by pitting right there as soon as he caught the leader. And how about this Brandon Beal? He pitted with James Shelley. What a call by North Border Motorsports. I think undercutting is going to be the... the game changer here in these last few laps because we're not going to have very few of the laps to go. Rodriguez, Davidson, and Silver Fox and Curtis all coming down pit road. Same with Griffin. The Red Bulls stay out. Curtis Racing's Cody Lama stay out. And there's James Silver Fox. Actually, Brandon Beal leaving pit road. S James Shelley undercutting by a lap. We're going to have to wait and see where he ends up. There goes Matt Rodriguez. Zayden Davidson leaving pit road. James, James Sorbox did not have a good pit stop. A bad pit stop by UER's James Sorbox. The race win has slipped away. And it's James Shelley that's got the jump on Matthew Rodriguez. And Rodriguez and Davidson are going to be left to try and chase Shelley down. With eight laps to go, here's how it looks. Shelley leads by 2.23 seconds over Matthew Rodriguez. That gap just seems like it's too big at this point in the race. And I think Shelley's pit crew needs a pay raise after that one. They ran down Matthew Rodriguez for the race lead and dove onto pit road immediately. And everyone else followed a lap later, but it was too late. The gap had already been taken away. And James Shelley jumped the leader in a game of leapfrog at 180 miles an hour. And he's out front with coming up to six to go. How about this Samuel England? He pitted even earlier than James Shelley. And that call to pit as early as he did may earn England a top five finish at this point. England has not had the best of runs this season, a very poor 2022 season and England in the podium positions, but looking like he could hold on for a top five. Davidson fourth, Lamas in fifth, Sorfox in sixth. Man, UER have to be kicking themselves a little bit there. They had a car capable of winning, and James Sorfox, nothing of his own doing, just, just was not able to get by Shelley to make up the ground quicker, and then the pit stop, the final pit stop, kind of ruined it there. DJ Curtis, a good solid seventh place, is going to help his championship ambitions. And same thing with Dejan Weeks. Right now in eighth place, going to be gaining a lot of ground in the title fight. Ryan Griffin trying to hang on to a top ten run here. He's in ninth. It's been a Daytona battle at the beach. He got a top ten. I think he had another top ten as well. But it's just not been quite the season CM Racing would have liked. It looks like Eric DeMax's top 10 run is just going to fall away here. But Griffin trying to, is going to have to fight for his all. Sanford in car 83. John Orton the 43 just outside of a top 10 run. Arts in 11th. He's going to have to try and get around Charles Sanford. He undercutted. He's still looking very competitive against John Art. 
All right, against Charles Sanford. Art in the 43. Look at Sanford trying to do the crossover. This is for the battle for ninth. Richard Johnson, who has been just quietly in the top 15 all this afternoon. Eric Demack slipping outside the top 10 is not where you, where you would like to see. Caution flag is out. There's a wreck. DJ Curtis and Dave John Weeks have crashed off a of turn two. We were just talking about a good point stay for the 30 and the 19. And Weeks and Curtis are wadded up. And that's going to be the end of the race. The end of the race. And James Shelley is the race leader. Math Rodriguez. Oh, and Cody Lamas ran down. England Davidson to get up to third. England is going to get a top five run if they finish at this rate. Sewer Fox, six. Wow. Sanford got by and moved up to seventh now. Ryan Griffin is going to get eighth, it looks like. John Art is going to get Allen Family Racing Team their first top ten of the season and ninth. And Jesse Turner, after starting outside the top 30, looks like he's going to finish in the top 10. The white flag is being displayed for James Shelley, the final lap of the event. Let's get a replay before we take the checker flag. Here's a replay of what happened. DJ Curtis was in seventh position. Oh, and Tim Foster got into Anthony Marchese. Nothing DJ Curtis could really do. And Dejon Weeks came along and hit Tip Foster. Plowing into him, and that's going to be out of the race for car 30, it looks like. And I think DJ Curtis might have continued. I'm not entirely sure at this point. But Jake Bassinger breathing a sigh of relief to see both Curtis and Weeks. That was second and third in the championship crashing. And Jake Bassinger is going to, whoo, that, that saves a lot of points. Some big championship rivals today getting taken out right at the better end. Well, <clears throat> this isn't how we would like to see the Sony Cup Series races end. But where there was less than two laps to go, there was no time for a restart. The top two finishers are frankly one of the best of the 1.5 mile tracks that we see. James Shelley in car 71 is going to get his first or is get his second win of the season. About forgot that he won at California. But James Shelley, who had just entered the top 20 in the point standings just a couple of races ago, is going to move even closer to the top 10 of the points. Shelley and Rodriguez in many of the last handful of 1.5 mile tracks, they have been right there fighting for the wins. And Rodriguez comes up just short of another 1.5 mile victory. But I think he's going to be... A little content. I think I know Matthew Rodriguez is going to hate to be coming up that short of victory. But it was a good effort nonetheless. It is Shelly Rodriguez and Lamas on the podium today. And congratulations to James Shelly on scoring his second win of the season. And fourth win for Turner Performance Racing in eight races. It just goes to show that Ford and Turn Performance Racing still have it going on in the Sony Cup Series. They have a 50% win ratio over the 2022 season so far. Round 9, next up, we'll head back to an old race, an old racetrack that we haven't been to in the modern era. We go to Savannah Speedway. We've tested there many times, but has not. it's been since Season 17 since we last been there for a points pain race. 150 laps around the half mile Savannah Speedway. And we hope to see you then. Congratulations again to TPR and James Shelley on the victory today. Now to your finishing results and standings.